Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Franklin High School, Howard Gamble Stadium, the home opener 2023. It's the Franklin Admirals hosting the Franklin Road Academy Panthers. Good evening, everybody. Jay Johnson alongside Rocky Jackson again tonight. We'll be with you again this season, bringing you all the action here from Franklin High School. Rocky, welcome in. Thank you, Jay. My, my sources down on the field tell me it's hot. Uh, just a little bit. It's hot up here. It's hot down there. It's uh, hot everywhere tonight. Uh, came into the press box earlier tonight, and the temperatures were, it was 98 degrees in here. So uh, definitely a rather warm evening. Uh, down on the field, temperatures are over 100 degrees right now, and it's almost 7 o'clock. So uh, not, uh, de definitely a challenging night for football, Rocky. Yeah, they're going to be battling this heat for sure. You look at the cramp monster coming up. Going to have to stay hydrated tonight for sure. So the ads last week went on the road for the uh, season opener, took on the Centennial Cougars. Now not a region game anymore. Centennial came away victorious. 34 to 14, Franklin got off to a good start, scored on their first offensive play of the game, a 52 yard or 53 yard touchdown pass. But then uh, from that point on, outscored 34 to seven. FRA on the other hand, they opened up last week on the road. They went to Clarksville and played Kenwood came away with a 49 to seven victory, scored 28 points in the first quarter, 21 in the second. And that was pretty much all she wrote, 49 to seven. Kenwood got a late touchdown in the fourth quarter uh, against some of the reserves to get on the board. But FRA coming in at one and oh, Franklin coming in at 0 and one. And Rocky Franklin going back, you look back their last win was September 24th, 2021. What do they got to do to get in the win column tonight? I think it goes down. They got to get back to the running game. They got to run the football and they got to run it well. FRA used two quarterbacks last week. Both of them pretty equal playing time. Both of them had a lot of success. So it's hard to know right now what we're going to see tonight. Yeah, Franklin going with Brewer Wilson, the junior uh, quarterback wearing number 15 tonight. And Lucas Young will be his favorite target. Also the junior wide receiver this year wearing number three. And you'll look to hear their names called a lot tonight. We're about three minutes away from kickoff. FRA is taking the field, still waiting on the Admirals. We'll take a short break. Be back with kickoff right after this.
Back at Franklin High School, getting ready to go here tonight. Franklin won the toss. They'll defer to the second half. Franklin Road Academy elected to receive, and they will receive and defend the south end zone to start on the right side of your screen. Again, Jay Johnson alongside Rocky Jackson, Miss Kerry Thompson producing tonight here at Franklin High School. Home opener. Rocky, we mentioned Admirals looking for their first win since September of 2021. What do they got to do tonight? We know we said run the ball. What do they got to do on the defensive side? Well, they had some bright points last year. It just seemed like they couldn't hold a consistent four quarters. You know, I remember coming in here even against Independence team, they they played two really good quarters, but it's like they just could not stay consistent for an entire football game. They have to do that if they want to put together some wins this year. Yeah, Franklin lost five games by one possession, uh, one one score games last year and uh, led many of those in the fourth quarter. And again, like you said, just couldn't hold on at the end. Yeah, even the ones they didn't lead, they were they were coming back and forth. They just couldn't close. Looks like we're getting ready to get going here. Good crowd here on this again steamy night. Well over 100 degrees down on the field before the game. Good crowd here still filing in. A lot of schools in Middle Tennessee move their games back an hour tonight. Try to avoid some of the heat. We're getting ready to get underway and kicking off for the Admirals. It'll be number 23 Wayne Wells. Deep to receive, you got Ty Clark from FRA along with Michael Hassel, both running backs. Clark last week leading rusher for FRA, had seven carries, had 131 yards on just seven carries. And he's got an opening, he's out across the 30 and it's gonna be the kicker Wells that stood him up for a second and held on till help comes and FRA will start with really good field position out around the about the 39, 38 yard line. Yeah, he stumbled a little bit back at the five and I think just that little bit of pause let him get some more blockers in front of him, opened up a gap. So it'll actually be the 37. And this looks like Logan Kennard will be in the back as quarterback. Low snap, Kennard, quick throw out, and it's dropped. Had a man out there, Boyd Brown, couldn't hang on. Yeah, Kennard, I think, was the obvious go-to guy from last week. He had eight attempts last week for 86 yards. FRA definitely probably watched some film on Franklin last week as uh, Centennial utilized that quick, quick release several times for good yardage. Second and 10, this time they'll keep it on the ground and up the middle is Clark. Clark's got a lot of room. He's across midfield into Franklin territory before finally being brought down. It went right off the right guard there, big gap. So put the ball just inside the 46, first and 10. And they'll run it again Same to the right play. side. Not as much going this time for Clark. He'll get a couple, two or three maybe. Jacob Dykstra on the stop. Jacob Dykstra got in on the tackle for Franklin. And we have a whistle. Yeah, stoppage at second and five. And the court on the point, second and six. So no huddle from FRA. Little tempo early. Now they'll run the option to the left side and they'll keep it on the ground with Kennard. He'll pick up a couple. Yeah, that was number one, Boyd Brown swinging around on the option, but they opted to keep it up the middle. Brings third and three here. 
So big third down here. You'd like to get your defense off the field on a day like today. Same formation as before. And they'll throw. Kennard throws into double coverage, up and caught. Nice catch there. It's number 18, Jonathan Wilson, went up between two defenders, pulled it down. Yeah, I think he just wanted that one more than anybody else. They kind of went down battling for that football, and I think he come up winning. So Wilson just high-pointed the catch there, went up between the two defenders, pulled it in, and it'll be a first down. Ball spotted at the 18. This will be Clark up the middle. Got a hole on the right side, and he'll pick up several yards before being wrapped up and brought back. They haven't ran outside very much yet, Jay. They're just going right up the middle. Yep, they seem to like that right side. So give him about four on the plate, second and six. This time they'll pull and throw. He's got a man open, nice play, and he had it, had it knocked away. Now, are they gonna call that a catch and a touchback? They are gonna call that a touchdown. Yeah, I think he crossed before they knocked it out of his hands, but that was real close from up here. You hit on it too, it's a nice play call. They faked the run right up the middle. And that's one that's one he'd like to see again. The extra point is up and good from Caleb Deering. And FRA goes right down the field, scores with 8.55 to go in the first quarter. Air Conditioning Service Incorporated. Go with the guys in the green trucks. And McDonald's, I'm loving it. Special thanks to the Franklin Admirals Quarterback Club for providing National Pizza Company pizza in the booth tonight. National Pizza Company is the official pizza. So we're back at Franklin High School, 8.55 to go. First quarter, FRA leads Franklin seven to nothing. A quick drive downfield and ended with a, an 11 yard touchdown pass for the Panthers. Yeah, that was way too easy. Even on, even on run plays where we did stop them, they still getting four or five from the line of scrimmage. They set the tone right here. Just gotta come back and answer. So we'll get a look at the Franklin offense here shortly. Kia Hamilton back deep to receive for Franklin. Caleb Deering to kick off for FRA. And it'll be a short one here. Fair catch call for by Will Crabtree. He'll take it there. 
And Franklin will have pretty good field position to start at the 30 yard line. So we get our first look at Brewer Wilson tonight. And they'll start on the ground. Sprig is tripped up right there. Jalen Spring in the backfield got tripped up in the backfield, made it back to the line of scrimmage. Turf monster. Do they still have that with a new turf? <laughs> new, new monster. Yes. They're, <laughs> they're everywhere. <laughs> so second and 10 from the 30. Wilson to throw for the first time tonight, rolls out. Now throws back across to the other side, incomplete, trying to hit Jack Flynn. I think he threw that pass away, and it was probably smart that he did so. His double coverage over there just didn't have anything on that play. So quickly, it's third and long from the 30-yard line. You'd like to see the offense uh, at least screen, string together a couple of first downs, keep the defense off the field a little bit. Yeah, this could be a marathon. Wilson's going to throw to the near sideline. It is caught. That is a, now where is they going to spot it? Depends on the spot here. Looks like they're going to spot him about a yard short of the first down. That was about a 10 to 15 yard out. That was a throw right there. I was about to say that you don't see that to the wide side of the field very often. It's going to be fourth and one at the 39. And we'll see if Coach Alex Melton rolls the dice here early. Looks like they're going for it. Going to keep the offense on the field. Play clock running down inside of 20. Are they gonna, really going to go for it, or are they going to try to draw them off sides here? They're going for it. Spring straight up the middle, got it. First down, Admirals out to the 45 yard line. Good six yards on that, and they needed one. Yeah, big statement from the line there. Spring gets the first down. Bobby Council made the tackle. He went right off right guard right there. They really needed an answer like that after what just happened on the defensive side of the ball. I got to tell you, after the hard count on the first one, I didn't think they were really going to snap the ball. Yeah, I thought we were. Just playing for a minute. So first and 10 for the ads. Ball now at the 45. New set of downs here. They'll keep it on the ground. Spring tries the middle again. Flag, Flag. comes in from the umpire. And usually that means holding. Or it looks like a face mask. I see the signal being given there. And it's going to be a, the 15 yard face mask. I think they said number 15 for FRA. I don't know how they see anything in those messages. <laughs> Zenner, the freshman, picks up the 15 yard penalty, and that'll move the Admirals into the 40 yard line. I agree with it, though. See if they stay with the run here. They'll go off the left side this time. New running back in the game. Sean Gacko with the carry. Very similar drives so far, Jay. Both teams running the football pretty well. Yeah, started out with quick passes and then went to the ground. So, and FRA flipped it back to the pass at the end of the drive. We'll see what Franklin does here. Gaka gets three on the play. Yeah. 
Here's a pass out to the far side. It's complete, and it looks like it'll be another first down. Yeah, he caught that at nine and fought for another three or four more. Wills Jackson with the catch and run, and that'll get it to the 29, where that's another first down for the ads. Yeah, both teams just kind of feeling each other out, Jay. I think seeing not, not much of a man defense out here on these wide receivers, and they're just kind of waiting on it. Matter of time before they take a shot. There's a quick screen out to Young. He'll turn the corner, gets by, and he's got room down he's the sideline all the way. Touchdown. Touchdown, Lucas Young. 29 yards on the catch and run, and the Admirals are in the end zone. Rocky, a play that just kind of came out of nowhere. Just a real quick screen. Young turns the corner, and he's gone. Yeah, he caught that ball in the backfield, and I, I think that was Wills Jackson that opened that up for him. He blocked down from his wide receiver position, gave him a lane, and he took off. Back well on for the extra point to tie it. It's up, and it is good. And 5-23 left in the first quarter. Our game is now tied. It's Franklin 7, Franklin Road Academy 7. We'll step away, be back right after this. Back at Franklin High School, Jay Johnson alongside Rocky Jackson, Miss Carrie Thompson producing tonight. Franklin and Franklin Road Academy tied 7 to 7, 5.23 to go here in the first quarter. Both teams with a drive for touchdowns on their first possession. Each Franklin, a 29 yard screen pass to wide receiver Lucas Young, and he takes it to the house to tie it up. Big answer right there, Jay. It's what they needed. So ads return into the field. Tonight might be one of those times you see in a game. You, we don't see it very often, but every once in a while you see it. Uh, if we have a break in action, the referees will hold that timeout just a little bit longer for water. Uh, the new uh, new rules mandate that on the, when temperatures are as high as they are tonight, they have mandatory water stoppages. So if, if we're away on a break for a little bit longer than normal, that's what's happening tonight. Yeah, I definitely support that rule. I'm drinking my own water up here, <laughs> and I ain't even playing. It's hot. So we're tied at 7, 5.23 to go. First quarter here on the home opener at Franklin High School. Franklin versus Franklin Road Academy. I could not tell you the last time these two teams met, if they even have played. Kick this time is going to sail into the end zone for a touchback, so it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Yeah, when I looked at this game on the schedule, it's kind of a surprise. I don't think I've ever, I can ever remember seeing these two teams play each other. So a home and home th this year and next. Uh, Franklin will travel to FRA next year and play in one of the uh, 
I always say one of the more unique places. I've always wondered when they kick that extra point on that uh, end zone, how far down the hill the ball yeah. actually goes yeah, at I FRA. I wouldn't want to be the, the guy <laughs> chasing those football. So second possession of the night for the FRA offense. Logan Kennard in at quarterback. Emptied the backfield for this, but you had some movement up front on this one. It's going to come back. Yeah, that play just didn't look right from the start, and a flag flies on the far sideline. And looks like we're going to get a false start. Dead ball. False start. The FRA came out. They, had one, they only had one running back in the backfield, and they tried to motion him out. And I think they had some miscommunication in there somewhere. Yeah, they got the wide receiver, Jonathan Wilson, for starting early that time. So that backs them up five. It'll be first and 15. Same formation, though. Or actually, no, they got two running backs in the backfield this time. That, that'll be a lateral to Clark, and he's going to throw it. And he's got a man. He hung it up, and it's knocked away incomplete. That ball hung up in the air just a little bit. Very fortunate. That was a running back that was throwing the football, but he just underthrew him by about three yards, it looked like. The wide receiver had to come back to get it, and that was the difference. Gave Dixon, Andrew Dixon on the coverage, had time to come back and knock that ball away. So FRA digging into the bag of tricks early here is a second and 15. Kennard will keep it. Straight up the middle. And he'll get back past the original line of scrimmage across to about the 22. And it'll bring up third and eight. On the stop. Jacob Dykstra again on the tackle for Franklin. About seven on the play. So yeah. third and eight, good chance for the defense to get off the field here with a stop. Hard to throw, looking, has time, throws over the middle, incomplete. incomplete. Trying to hit Charlie Speed, great name for a wide receiver, but it was low and into the turf and incomplete. And FRA will have to punt. Yeah, Franklin kind of forcing it there, Jay. They, they're not getting much pressure on the quarterback at all. He's just able to stand back there and look around too much for my liking. But good covers downfield. They'll have to kick it away. So Bobby Council on the punt. That's a big punter. I was about to say that is a <laughs> big punter. Now he kicked that one a mile high. Punt too. And a great bounce for FRA. Thomas Tillman let it go, and it cost Franklin about another 18 or 20 yards there. But the defense gets a stop, and Franklin takes over first and 10 ball at their own 28-yard line. Well, here's Wilson again, second possession for the Admiral's offense. Spring is in the backfield with him just to his right. Quick pass out in the flat, complete. That's Same. Jack Flynn. Appreciate That's the same play, I think. They just got a touchdown on a minute ago. Try it again. Donovan Pinkston came up to make the tackle from his linebacker position. The loss of yard on the play is second and 11. So this time it loses a yard and it's second down and 11. Clock running, 3.35 to go, first quarter. Franklin FRA tied 7-7. Seven to seven. 
They'll go to spring, straight up the middle, got room. Big hole. He's across the 40, out to the 50, and down around the 49. Big room for Jalen Spring off the left side. Well, went right off left guard right there, Jay. That's just good running, running football. I thought they stood him up in the backfield, and he just was not coming down. So first and 10 for the ads, ball at midfield. Wilson to throw, this time's complete. Jackson makes a move, gets by his man, got a first down. He's out to the 40 yard line or down to the 40 yard line where he's brought down by Michael Hassel. I think that's the third catch for Jackson, and every one of them, he's taken three or four more yards after the catch. Tough to bring down tonight. So adds on the move again. First and 10 from the 39. They'll give it to the back this time. I believe that's Gaka straight up the middle. Nothing there much. He might have gotten a yard. Back on the carry. Bradley Schmoke on the stop. Yeah, Schmoke was there on that play. No gain on the play. Second and 10. No gain. So Gacka back to the line of scrimmage, makes it second and 10, ball at the 39. Four receivers this time. Wilson to throw, looks. So now he'll tuck it, now picks it up and throws over the middle, trying to hit Jackson. Just needed a little bit more air under that one. This is for Jackson. Yeah, they had two receivers left, two right. Both that's covered that's pretty that's good. good. I think that's just a safe play right there. He didn't wanna, didn't wanna make a mistake. Saw Wills throwing his arms up. I didn't think if he thought he got held or a third and 10. Need another big play here to convert. Wilson over the middle. Jackson hit him in the hands. He couldn't catch it. He got a step. He ran a post route from that far left side. He had maybe a step on his on a defender and just dropped it. It's fourth and 10. Sanders was right there, but he was just behind him and Wilson put it right on the money. And Wills probably wishes he had that one back. Four and 10 here, they're gonna send on the punt team from the what was it, 39. Speed is deep. It's one of those prime areas, though, you might look for a fake. Yeah, there's not much to lose or gain here. Not this time, they'll kick. Wobbly end over end kick's gonna be fielded at the five yard line. That's a great punt from there. It's in the five, but you can ask for much more. Thompson King, the punter, drops it in just outside the five yard line. They'll call it about the six. So FRA's got 94 yards to go, 201 to go first quarter. Actually surprised he caught that football. I thought for sure he was gonna let it drop. At that point, you got better odds of it going in the end zone than you do. You know, one of the things I've noticed on TV now in both college and the pro game, the 10 yard line used to be the anything inside the 10, let it go. Now it seems like it's almost back to the seven or so. Late man into the game for FRA. Play clock's down to five. They'll have to hurry. They'll get it off. This will be Clark off the right side and he's got a lot of room. Cuts it back, makes a man miss. He's across midfield. Again, finally wrestled down. 
He was untouched until he got 40 yards downfield. And I'll say this, we don't have any metrics on how big this kid is, but he's big. Yep. That's one of the bigger running backs I've seen. Santino Bruni brought him down and saved the touchdown. So 54, 59 yard game on the play. But it's first and 10 now, and just like that, FRA is in Franklin territory at the 36 yard line. Yeah, that's flipping the field for sure. Nard to throw, flag on the play, tries to hit the receiver coming back on a screen, and it's incomplete. Charlie Speed was the receiver. FRA came out in different formation that time. They left one of their wide receivers in and brought out another lineman. See if this is illegal motion or offsides. So it was motion. It'll cost them five yards. So now it's first and 15. It's first and 15 after the five yard penalty. Back to the three receiver set here with only Clark in the backfield. And FRA is probably going to use a timeout here as the play clock runs down, and they're going to take their first timeout. So we've got a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout. 124 to go, first quarter. Franklin and Franklin Road Academy tied at seven. One twenty-four to go, first quarter, 7-7, seven to seven, Franklin and FRA tied. FRA on the move again at the 41-yard line. And coming out of the timeout, they've got the play clock down inside of 10 again. It's down to six. And this time Franklin's going to give the five yards back, I believe. Dead ball. Encroachment, defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Back and forth. First and 10 after the five-yard penalty against Adler's. So now we're back to first and 10 from the 36-yard line. No change in formation here from FRA. Still got Ty Clark in the backfield. This time Kennard will fake it and keep it off the left side. He's got good yardage down to about the 25. Looks like a first down. Dixon on the stop. Yards on the play. Fake the handoff up the middle and just ran around the left side for what looks to be a first. Yeah, they're signaling now. So 
So first and 10, ball now at the 25 yard line. This time they'll fake to Clark and look, throw, left side, got a man open, nice catch. Was he inbounds? Yes. Uh, I think he went out the one, maybe the two. Bobby Council, the big running back. He goes down the sideline to make a great catch down around the two yard line. So it's first and goal. This time they'll go to Clark straight up the middle into the end zone, touchdown FRA. Nothing fancy on that play, just went right up the middle. And just like that, FRA regains the lead with 41 sec seconds to go in the first quarter. Deering on to try the extra point. And they drop the snap and let's see what's gonna happen. He's not gonna get there. The holder. Roman Malrain tried to run it in, but he was stopped just inside the five yard line and the kick, kick fails. So 41 seconds to go. First quarter action. And we got a Franklin player now. We'll check on that, see who it is when we come back. And we're back at Franklin. Uh, Andrew Dixon's the injured Franklin player being helped off right now. Jay, I can't tell if that's a cramp, but he's kind of, he needs a little bit of help, but he's limping along. Yeah, hope, hopefully he'll be back 
here soon. Medical staff out there along with athletics principal Toby Ruth. And hopefully he'll be all right and be back. So it's 13 to seven. Yeah, very fortunate on that muffed extra point. That could come back to haunt them. You know, a lot of times I'll be watching games at home, and that's where I say right now I can see a 28 to 27 final. I know I feel bad, but as soon as I seen it, my brain went Tony Romo. <laughs> I thought of him immediately. Of course, he's now a commentator just like me. <laughs> So we still got 41 seconds to go. I don't know if it's me. This seems like it's been a long quarter. I think it's just hot. <laughs> <laughs> that and you're on something. They are giving them a little bit more time during the breaks to get down some more water. Stay hydrated out here. Air on the side of Kosh. During the kickoff, here's the kick. It's up. This time he'll kick it deep, and Hamilton will get a chance to return it. He takes it at about the nine. Comes toward us, and nothing there. So he's wrapped up. Number 20, first there, Michael Hassel. Sophomore defensive back comes up to make the tackle. So 36 seconds left in the first quarter, and Franklin will have it at the 19-yard line. Wilson in the gun. He'll hand it off this time. Makes one man miss, but not the second. This is Hamilton, I think, that carried it that time. And he got by the first defender, but then Amari Sanders was there. Yeah, that was 67 Bradley Schmoke come right up the middle and kind of busted that play up before he even got out of the backfield. So he'll lose a yard on first down. As clock ticks down under 10 seconds, that might have been the final play of the first quarter. Let's see. And the clock hits zero, and it indeed will be the final quarter, final play of the first quarter. So we played one here on a hot, steamy, balmy evening at Franklin High School and Franklin Trails, Franklin Road Academy, 13 to seven. We'll be back with second quarter action after this. What's up, about their left guard? Second quarter ready to get underway. Second down and 11, Franklin Road Academy up on the Admirals, 13 to seven, missed extra point. On their latest score has led to the six point margin. Second down for the ads, Wilson takes it out of the gun. Under pressure, gets away first time, but not the second time. As coming from behind, I believe, is that 28 again? Wilson sacked on the play by Council. Yes, Bradley Schmoke coming right up the middle again, this time getting 
He don't the quarterback. He's got. He's a little bit shaken up, Jay. He's got to come off. Yeah, Council came from the backside to get the sack. Council doing a little bit of everything. Had that good catch on the sideline to put FRA inside the five, and now he gets a big sack. Got to be careful here, third and long. Here's a quick one. The receiver slipped on the far sideline trying to go to Wills Jackson, and it's incomplete. And just like that, Franklin will have to send out the punt team. Yeah, that play was off from the get-go. Had a low snap, and he just threw off the timing of the stop route. Fourth and 14. So Thompson King comes on to punt for the second time tonight. Had a good one on the first one, pinned him inside the 10 yard line down to the six. You have to get a good boot away on this one. This one's a low, lazy spiral and it's taken and a lot of room there for speed as he brings it all the way down to the Franklin 33, maybe 32 yard line. That's one of those kicks that had some good distance, but it was so low, your punt coverage didn't have time to get down the field. Yeah, it got there too fast. And speed had some speed. <laughs> I knew that was coming at some yeah, point I tonight. Take it. I tried to mentally <laughs> get away from it, but I couldn't. So great field position for FRA here. Kennard back in the backfield. He'll fake it this time. Rolls right, looking, looking, checks it off, trying to get it to council again, incomplete. I think he was looking deep for Brown, but he was covered up. And he tried to check it down to the running back, and he couldn't come up with it. So second and ten. Yeah, that was Santino Bruni covering the check down. Good defense all around right there. This time, Kennard keeps it off the left side. Shoestring tackle there by, I believe that's Gacka. I think Gacka just saved touchdown right there, Jay. Good tackle on open field. He tripped him up in the 19 and probably saved a touchdown, but not after, not until he got a first down. So first and 10 for FRA, threatening again from the 19. Clark will get it this time off the left side, nothing there. Good job by the line that time. Walker Wells, one of the first ones there. I think Hudson Parks was in there as well. Gang tackles, two or three in there. So got about a yard and a half. It'll be second and long. This time it's out into the flat. And a nice open field tackle there. Wilson made the catch. And that was Lucas Young on the tackle, I think, on that. Yeah, Lucas Young playing both ways tonight. Came up to make a great open field tackle, and they lost a yard on that play. So it'll be third and now a long nine. And you'd like to get out of here just letting them attempt a field goal. And I think they're going timeout, timeout call before the snap. Seen something he didn't like right there. So Franklin uses his first timeout of the half with nine minutes, nine seconds to go trailing 
13 to 7. We'll take a timeout as well and step away. Back at Franklin High School, 9.09 to go. First half, 13-7, FRA leading. Third and nine here. Big third down play for the ads defense. It's third down and nine yards to go. Brown to the bottom of the screen. Two receivers to the top of the screen. And they'll fake the handoff and then spring it out to Council. Council ran over a man at the 13. Still going, still going. And he's close and he's in. Touchdown, FRA. Would not go down right there. That's just a heck of a catch and run. Yeah, they had a chance to get him right around the 12-yard line. And he just ran over a guy on the way to the end zone. And it's it's 19 to 7. Extra point pending here from Caleb Deering. Deering's kick is up and it's good. So FRA takes a 20 to seven lead with 8.58 to go Don't miss another in the first half. Well, we've had both ends of the spectrum. Last week, Franklin traveled to Centennial. When we kicked off, I think it was 76 degrees, and you couldn't believe what an August night that was tonight. On the field at kickoff time, it was well over 100 degrees. Rocky, how much difference is that to, uh, you know, you, you wore helmets and pads. How much different is it being going from 78 degrees to 102. It's a big difference. <laughs> I think if if you're playing both sides of the football, it, it's it's a much larger difference. You don't get to come over here all the time and take the helmet off and and grab a bunch of water. You're just back and forth. Trying to see how much uh, on the sideline there. Trying to get a look, see how many fans they got going down there. I see at least one. I don't think I don't think it's going to matter. Like I said, it's just, on a night like tonight, it's it's a marathon. It's not really much of a sprint. You know, it's it's just hard to stay mentally tough when it's this hot for four quarters. That's the big difference. And again, it seems that you blamed it on the heat. It does seem to be a slow game tonight, as we are just in the second quarter and still have nearly nine minutes to go. Yeah, and I think you're seeing it a little bit even in the play calling too. You know, they, they know this is going to drag out. They know it's going to be a long game, so we're not seeing, you know, lots of long shots. It's just methodical running of the football, short passes, safe plays. 
So Deering will kick off. He's got Kia Hamilton deep for Franklin. Standing at the two yard line. Hamilton retreats, he'll catch it in the end zone and they'll let him bring it out. And nothing but white jerseys in front of him as he brings it out to the, about the 19. So again, Franklin will start at the 19 yard line. You can hear in the background, kind of got to give credit where it's due. Franklin's student section came in force tonight in the heat, uh, give them credit. Yeah, we made the comment, we've never seen them this close to our booth as far as how far up they are and they're even spreading out in front of us, which we've never seen that before. Yeah. This is by far the hottest night I can recall. Franklin offense back, gives it to Spring. He goes left side, gets two or three across the 20, out to maybe the 21. And we got a player down for FRA, and that might be the might be the first cramp we've really seen of the night. Looks like it. There it is, the old stretch. The leg, yep. Yep. So I think right here they're going to use this as one of the mandatory water stops. So while they're doing that, we'll step away, get us a get us a little water break, and we'll be back after this. So we're back after a three yard gain and a stoppage. This time Wilson to throw. He's going to go deep looking for Lucas Young incomplete. Had a step on Michael Hassel, but just overthrew him a little bit. Yeah, overthrew him. It's just nothing but a go route. He had a step, like you said, but just wasn't there. Gonna put a little bit more air under that one. So third and seven, big third down here. Quick screen out to Jackson. Jackson down the sideline. He'll have the first down. Yeah, great little block right there. Lucas Young opened up that gap again for him. Good first down. Hassel ran him out of bounds, but not before he converted the third down and got a first down out to the 35. Big conversion there, keeps the defense off the field. Low snap, Wilson picks it up, gives it, gives it to Spring, he's got room. And he's out across the 45, out to about the 47. And a play that looked ugly from the beginning turns into a big gain. That is a very fortunate bounce for Franklin right there. That ball actually hit the ground and bounced right up into the quarterback's hands. That very rarely happened. Great job by Brewer Wilson to scoop that ball up and still make a good handoff. Timing was thrown off and he still put it right on the mark. 
So first and 10 from the 47. Straight up the middle, Hamilton's got a hole. He's across the 45, down inside FRA territory to the 43. And it's another first down for the ads. He's right at the sticks and they'll give it to him. I think the uh, quarterback in the center had a conversation for that play. It was a much better snap. <laughs> So oh, Admiral's driving here down to the 43 into FRA territory, trailing 20 to seven, seven minutes, 28 seconds to go, first half. Stay Hamilton again, staying on the ground to the right side this time, and he'll have at least five, maybe six. Franklin's coaching staff must pick up on something. They put together a couple of good runs here on this drive. Yeah, I was looking that time, Rocky. There looked like there were four defenders that were at least 10 yards off the ball that time. Yeah, they're given plenty of space. They'll keep it on the ground with Hamilton. This time, not as much there. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage or a short gain. Yeah, you're at the point now after the runs that we've had in the past couple of snaps. Linebackers start creeping up a little bit, closing down some gaps. Third and four here. They kind of got an option to do either or. So third and four here from the 37 yard line. They'll throw Wilson over the middle. Trying to hit Lucas Young. He thought he was interfered with and I got, it looked like he did get I held. Did too. I thought he, he nearly got tackled on that route. No flag. We're going to watch a replay up here in our booth. And we really couldn't see it. It was off camera, but tonight you got a, you got a eight of you got an eight man crew tonight. So you would think you might get those calls with eight man crew. So the offense will stay on the field. Second time tonight. Franklin's gone for it on fourth down this time a little bit longer. Fourth and four. Still a lot of white jerseys deep. And Wilson's gonna be sacked. And the ball's gonna go over. That's Zinner that got through. Burning Zinner. Yeah, Zinner came right up the middle, that play. Right off center, center. Freshman. <laughs> it's a big freshman. Yeah. So a big play there for FRA, and they'll take over on the 45-yard line with excellent field position. Yeah, yeah. kind of unfortunate on, on what we thought was a pass interference, but it seemed like he kind of just pulled up in the middle of that route, too. That can't happen either. So big series here, you really need a stop. You don't want to go down three scores here. And this will be Clark off the left side and he's met immediately and wrapped up. It's Aiden Elmore on the stop. He's got about three on the play, second and seven. 5.20 to go, clock running. Three wide receivers on the long side here. They'll throw, got it to speed, and he makes the catch for the first down. Immediately he's brought down. Walker Wells made the tackle, but speed gets the first down up to the 40. The first and 10 for the Franklin 40. 
Franklin bringing in fresh defensive linemen here. A throw this time, complete on the far side. One man misses and they're making the tackle, but that not after he gets first down. Caden Richardson made that catch. Yeah, we may have had him drop for at least no gain, but he made the first man miss. Went on to pick up first down. So another first down for the Panthers as they have it at the 30. Again, three wide receivers near side. This is Clark. Clark makes a man miss, makes two men miss before finally being wrapped up by Aiden Elmore. Elmore brings it down. Franklin's got to tighten up right here. That's probably the fifth or sixth missed tackle on this one drive. So we're inside of four minutes. Fake to Clark this time. Throw for the end zone. Looking and incomplete. Trying to hit, trying to hit Brown. But he was covered up there by Sean Gacka. Good defense there by Gacka. They fought the whole way down. in motion. Kennard keeps it. Gets away from first man, gets away from the second man before being brought down there. Walker Wells again. Yeah, Jacob Dykstra wrapped him up, kind of stopped the flow of that play and had to get some help, but uh, kept it from a much bigger game. So it's third and a long five. Big play right here. Again, holding them to a field goal attempt here might be a small victory. Clark straight up the middle, goes all the way into the end zone, touchdown. So 2.33 to go, it's now 26 to seven as Ty Clark takes it in from 15 yards out. Look like you went right off the right guard here. That's big Bradley Smoke again. Just paving the way. There's been some big gaps right up the middle. And FRA is gonna try to get that point back from the missed extra point. They'll go for two as they move the ball over to the left hash mark. A little bit different look here as they only have uh, Boy Brown out here by himself on the long side. Kennard will roll that way and then try to throw back the other and he underthrew his receiver and his receiver was going down anyway and it's incomplete. So 26 to seven remains your score. 2.33 to go in the first half. Still time, Franklin's got two timeouts. Plenty of time to answer right here. That's what I was thinking. So they really do need to answer here and get something positive, even if it's just a field goal before halftime. They do get the ball to start the second half.
So here we go, another long break to get a little extra water in. And just for fun, let's see what the temperature is right now. It's hot. <laughs> That's what it is. Eighty six degrees and it feels like it's ninety six. If it's eighty six up here, it's ninety down there. <laughs> I know that. So back from the break here, Franklin needs to get something going here before halftime, even if they can get down, get a field goal. It's 2.33 to go. They got two timeouts left. And again, it'll be during the kickoff. Kia Hamilton's back deep. Hamilton beat the Franklin. We're getting a, a free concert out of this, Jay. <laughs> you know, Western night here. A lot of cowboy hats in attendance tonight. So Deering puts it into play. And this one will angle into the end zone. No chance for a return. And it'll come out to the 20, where Franklin will have it first and 10. Still ask this when high school is going to get with the times and move the ball out to the 25 on a touchback. It's hard enough to keep up with all the rules now. <laughs> I hope they don't go changing them. So again, 2.33 to go. Franklin with two timeouts. Wilson in the gun. He'll throw on first down. Comes to the near side. Wills. He spins, gets out to close to the 30, stays in bounds. Wills Jackson with the catch. Franklin had a lot of success last drive with the run. They just kind of, that one pass play that didn't work out kind of stopped them. I want to see if they'll go back to it here if they have enough time. 2.06 to go, clock running. As they say, he was still inbound. Second and one, actually less than one. Low snap, Wilson trying his man. Jackson got away. He was on the sidelines. Again, I think Coach Melton's saying he's being held, and I got to agree with him. Yeah, they're letting the play right now for sure. That one's shaking up too. That's Jack Flynn for the So clock stopped with the incompletion at 152. You got to get the first down here. It's third and one. Crowd coming to life here on the near side. Wilson to throw. He's going to throw deep. Lucas Young just out of his reach, incomplete. So now decision time. It's fourth and less than a yard. But you're on the your own 29-yard line with 146 to go. And Coach Melton's keeping the offense on the field. I think this one's just tried to draw them all. Play clock down to nine. 
And I don't think they'll snap yeah, it here. I think here. they're just going to call a timeout here. And timeout, Franklin. Timeout, Franklin. Two second charge, timeout. Yeah, last week at Centennial, we saw a, you know, I would say some kind of record number of penalties. I mean, there was a flag every play. I, I kind of joked uh, during the game that Centennial might have broken the University of Miami's Cotton Bowl record for penalty yardage in a game. I mean, we had a ton of penalties. Tonight's been a pretty clean game, but uh, again, referees letting them play. They're letting them hand fight and battle. Yeah, so far, with the exception of the one personal foul face mask penalty, it's it's been pretty straight straightforward. I'm not real sure if I punt this or if I go for this. Don't forget to stop by the quarterback. Because you don't want to go into the locker room with them being able to put another field goal on you right before you go in there. Thompson Kings in the game and looks like they will punt. Kings kick away, lazy. And it's dropped. Drop, but he went right under his feet. And speed falls on it. And he'll get it back. So now FRA's got two timeouts and a minute and 38 seconds and good field position. Let's see what FRA is going to do here. Same formation so far. They got three wide toward the top, one close to us here. Hard to throw. Got time. Looking, looking, throwing deep into double coverage, tipped and incomplete. Trying to go to Caden Richardson. He was double teamed back there. Thompson King. Thompson King, believe that was Luke Thompson Luke. back there with him. Yeah, Luke Thompson came from the other side. So you have both safeties. Still fortunate to knock that ball down. So 129 to go. FRA again still with two timeouts left. This time, Kennard rolls left, looking, looking. Now he'll throw, batted down. Got a flag on the play as well. Bruni knocked it down. There's a flag on the play. Down to a number 53, Robin. The clock will start on the snap. Ian Zachariah flag for being an eligible receiver downfield. So clock down to 122, third and 10 as they decline the penalty. The Admiral just ran in three fresh defensive guards as well, rotating them in and out. It's third down and 10 yards to go. Big play here for the defense. They'll fake it to Clark. Kennard's going to be brought down and go nowhere. Thank you, 
Santino Bernay brings him down, and Coach Melton takes his third and final timeout, so they'll get the ball back. And Franklin will have the opportunity to get something done. Now it seems like a long quarter. So we'll see the punt team for FRA for the second time. Bobby Council will come on to punt. And back deep is Thomas Tillman. Boy, it'd be nice to make something happen right here. Oh, almost snapped it over his head, and he's going to run. And they'll bring him down short, and so that's a big break for Franklin. They'll get the ball back in FRA territory. I'm wondering, was that intentional, or did he just, after the high snap, feel like he couldn't get that one off? From the way that they sealed that side, I think it was intentional. But I'll say this, he needed every inch of his frame to get that high snap. <laughs> that was a break. So Franklin now with a short field, a minute and four to go. They're out of timeouts, though. Wilson will roll to the right, being chased, and he'll be sacked. Council doing a little bit of everything tonight. He caught him from the back side on that play. That was just an athletic play. So clock still running. Is Franklin's out of timeouts now. 35 seconds to go. Franklin backed up. Wilson to throw. Throws caught and hit hard. Jack Flynn with the catch. And he's hit hard by Elliot Yabara. Held on to that football, though. That's a good play. 12 seconds to go. Franklin will have to hurry. 30-16. Barely get it off. They'll have to wing this one out. Brewer throws that one off his back foot. And it's incomplete. And that will do it for the first half. We played a half here at Franklin. Both teams got off to a good start. Franklin and FRA both scored on their first drives. And ever since then, it's been all FRA as they lead it at the half, 26 to seven. We'll step away, have a presentation for the Franklin High School cheerleaders. You'll see the Franklin High School band and we'll be back for the second half after this. Orlando, Florida. This year's victory is the third consecutive win for the team. And they also claimed the championships in 2021 and 2022. 
This championship produced by the Universal Cheerleading Association is the pinnacle of cheerleading competitions for high school cheerleaders across the country. This year's event hosted 1,125 teams across 33 states. Teams competing at the championship must first have qualified at a regional chip competition early in the season. Teams were credentialed in cheer safety and leadership training, endorsed by the National Federation of High Schools, as well as in the areas of crowd leading, spirit raising, ambassadorship, athleticism, and entertainment. Cheerleading teams are judged on their stunting and tumbling skills, crowd leading ability, and overall performance. This 21 member cheer team competed against 46 teams in the preliminary round. Their flawless performance earned the highest score in the division, thus granting them the automatic advancement to the finals. It was there that they captured the Division I Medium Varsity Game Day National Championship with a score of 96.1. Ladies, we commend you on your exceptional, exceptional accomplishments and hard work. Tonight, each member will receive a commemorative copy of the Senate Joint Resolution Number 324, as well as their national championship rings. The girls can now be seen wearing their gold medals and covered in white jackets that were presented to them after the victory. I will now turn the microphone over to Coach Shannon Friend. On behalf of the entire team, Macklin Friend, Molly Black, Clara Beth Wilkes, Kylie Adamanu, Reagan Goodman, Charlotte Ogbos, Una McGettigan, Lee Smith, Claire Jones, Elise, uh, Ella Disney, Sarah Scoby, Addison McCloskey, Emmy Wald, Sienna Winton, Hannah Lassner, Libby Wisniewski, Gianna Tuszynski, and, and Bethany Schubert. We present this resolution to Dr. Shane Pantall to be hung in our trophy case for years to come. Thank you, Coach Frans. Give one more round of applause to the national champion for the high school cheerleaders. Franklin High is collecting money for its annual food drive. The cheerleaders will be passing around boxes through the crowd. Please donate what you can for these worthy cars. Again, that's for the Franklin High collecting money for the annual food drive. Joining us from Franklin, Tennessee, the Franklin High School Marching Band. 
Frank of 2023 production is entitled Rag to Rhinestone, featuring the music from Rocky Top yeah. and Shucky McCorn by Brothers Osborne Brothers. Nine to five, Jolene, Coat of Many Colors, and I Will Always Love You by Dolly Parton. Franklin High School is proud, proud to present for your halftime in, time entertainment. Drum majors, Kate Bartholo and Judy Stu and the Franklin High School marching band. and let's hear it for the Franklin High School Marching Band. The Franklin High School Marching Band is under the direction of Michael Holland and Brianna Roach with assistance from Levi Brandenburg, Michael Horvath, and Mike Wrightsky. Staff members include Nick Blue, Aaron Ferris, Justin Gorditsky, Sophia Grasso, Laura Ann Grayson, Braxton Lazarus, Elisha Lloyd, Zach Shaw and Carson Shipley. A seven-time Tennessee State Marching Band champion, the Franklin Band has marched in the Tournament of Roses Parade and twice in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. A proud brand, Bands of America participant since 2008, Franklin is a two-time BOA regional champion and four-time class national runner-up. 
Festival's 2013 Seven Groups of Franklin have performed at the Music for All National Festival. The Franklin Band is a 2014 recipient of the Sudland Shield presented by the Z John Philip Sousa Foundation. And in 2024, the Fran Franklin Band will perform in the St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York City. Give it up one more time for the Franklin High School Marching Band.
Welcome back to Franklin High School, everyone. I'm Jay Johnson alongside Rocky Jackson and Kerry Thompson bringing you tonight's game from Franklin. We're getting ready to start the third quarter. Franklin trailing 26-7 to to Franklin Road Academy. Franklin will get the ball to start the second half. It'll be Kia Hamilton back to receive. And kicking off again will be Caleb Deering for FRA. Appreciate you joining us here this hot, muggy Friday night, and second half is underway. And Deering's kick will sail into the end zone for the touchback, and the Admirals will take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Rocky, give me uh, some thoughts on the first half. Uh, I think Franklin's got to go back to the run here. They, they had a lot of success early running the football. But it seems that, uh, you know, let's just put it blunt, referees are letting them play. They're not getting much on pass routes. Lots of hand grabbing, fighting going on. I think it's just whoever runs the football is going to end up coming out of this ahead. And that's open up on the handoff to Spring. He'll battle and push his way forward, pick up a couple. Maybe two yards. Yeah, at the end on the stop. We've seen Jalen Spring, we've seen Gacka, and we've seen Hamilton all in the backfield tonight. This time it's Spring, he picks up two, and it'll be second and eight. This time Wilson to throw, he'll come this way. Wills Jackson makes the catch on the sideline, and he's run out of bounds close to a first down. It's gonna be a yard or two short. Good little out route there by Jackson. Planted the foot and turned. Ball right on the money. Good play. So third and one from the 29. Give up the middle. Gacka had a hole and he cut through it and got a first down. Good play call there. They caught FRA with only three guys up front. Looking for a pass on the third and short. Sean Gacka picks up the first down. First and 10 for the ads. Ball to 34, trailing 26 to 7. Early in the third quarter. Four receivers this time. Two to the top of the screen, two to the bottom. He'll keep it on the ground with Gacka through the middle. He's got a hole. He He's is, got a chance. He could go all the way, and he will. 10, he 5, touchdown. That's the way to answer. Sean Gacka. 66 yards to the end zone. Went right off right guard right there. I think that was Logan Lynch opening that gap, and he was gone. So the ads have scored on both of their first possessions of each half. And they're on the board early here in the second half. Bagwell for the PAT. Kick is up and it's good. So less than two minutes for the ads to find the end zone. And with 10.08 to go in the third quarter, it's 26-14. They needed that. Just a big play right there. And it's got the students back in the game a little bit more than they already were. You can keep up with all Franklin Admirals athletics this school year by following Joe Williams and Charles Williams so go ahead rocky i have never seen so many drones at a football game <laughs> i don't know what's a football and what's not yeah that's the the new way of things Sponsors. Air 
Conditioning Service Incorporated. Go with the guys in the green shirt. And we go. I'm loving it. So a little momentum for Franklin as the third quarter gets underway. 26-14, they still trail. But again, hopefully I'm right on this. I said on that missed extra points when you can see a 28-27 or 35-34 game. Back. Yeah, I think, you know, they, they moved the ball consistently all night, Franklin has, but I think it's going to come down to being able to stop Ty Clark. And it's going to come down to what changes they made when they went in at the half because they got to do something different. Yep. So Wayne Wells to kick off. This one a little shorter. It's returnable. It's taken at the 10. And he slips and falls on the return. That was Michael Hassel. He slipped and knee touched down back at the 24 yard line. So let's see if the Franklin defense can get a stop here. Same look as the first half for FRA. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Clark in the backfield. Kennard running the option to the left side, keeps it, cuts it upfield, gets out to about the 30. I think that's the third time we've seen the option and they haven't pitched it yet. I think Penn Montgomery came up to make the tackle, but he got six yards. It'll be second and four. Three wide receivers to the right this time. Just one wide receiver to the left with Boyd Brown. Kennard keeps it himself, straight up the middle, makes a man miss, runs through a tackle, and he's out to about the 43-yard line. He's got a first down. FRA is doing a good job of spreading out Franklin's defense, running right up the middle. It's tough to defend. So first and 10 for the Panthers, ball at their own 42. Play clock, you know, I look and I think it's down low, it's still on 20. It's a pass over the middle, missed a tackle, breaks another one across midfield, still going, still going down to about the 46 yard line. And here comes a late flag. And more flags. So the play came down to the 46, but then we'll have to see what all the flags are. That was a different play. They brought Ty Clark out into the flat like he was going to become a receiver. That's right from the play. And then as the play developed, they ran him right up the middle and threw the ball to him. Officials doing a good job here talking this over. A lot going on in that play. Here's a rather lengthy discussion here. <laughs> Adding to the length of the game here. I think they're figuring out how here many flags. Dead ball, personal foul, 55, defense. Dead ball, 
personal foul, 26, defense, and it's 15 yard penalty for this set. So there you go, two on Franklin there, two on Sportsmanlike or two personal fouls. Will give FRA 30 yards. And Coach Melton pleading his case over on the sideline. And the official's going to come over and listen to him for a second. As that moves the ball all the way down just outside the 15 yard line. Hard to believe it wasn't both sides on that, but they saw what they saw. Yeah, I was expecting the old, those fouls offset, offset. first down, you know. The guy that looked the most upset on the play was Clark. Clark had his helmet off and he, he looked like he was the most upset of anybody. I guess he was just hot. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're ready to get going again here. So they're going to send Clark off because his helmet came off. He's got to sit one. So he's got to sit off, sit out of play. New rule came in a couple of years ago. That is Michael Hassel coming in in his spot at the running back. He's by himself with Kennard in the backfield. So Hassel will get the carry off the right side. Flag comes in, he hurdles a player, goes into the end zone, but I think that one's coming back as there's a flag down in the backfield. And Bobby Council's pleading his case right now as if to say, what did I do? And it's gonna be Council picking up the holding penalty, so that one will come back. So that'll nullify a pretty impressive run from Hassel there. That was definitely fresh legs coming in with Hassel. That was a pretty run, all for naught. Hassel got a couple of carries last week and scored a touchdown on one of his two carries. First and 20. Had one tonight, and that one comes back. Kennard this time, this time he will pitch it to Clark. Clark escapes one man down the sideline. He's gonna go all the way in, touchdown. This time, no flags. And FRA is in the end zone again with 8.06 to go in the third quarter. Had a chance to get him with maybe a two yard gain there and missed another tackle. Clark, just a big running back and he is proving to be a fit for Franklin to bring down the night. So FRA answers with a touchdown of their own, and it's 32 to 14 with the extra point coming up. And the kick by Deering is good. We see coach down here making the, the motion to wrap up. Just been too many missed tackles. So 8.06 to go, 33 to 14. Franklin will go back on offense here after the kickoff. Power 
And, you know, there's, there's some talented guys over there on that sideline for FRA. You're, you know, Kennard, uh, the quarterback, Clark in the backfield. you got Brown on Brown and Speed. You've seen Wilson, uh, even Council. And you really do. you got to bring those guys down. If you let them escape that first tackle, they've turned those into big plays. Yeah, so far, a lot of their offense revolves around Clark either as some sort of decoy on a pitch or running the ball up the middle. I don't know how many yards he has right now, but it's a lot. Yeah, last week, like we said, he had seven carries for 131 yards and three touchdowns. So uh, he, he's been he's been impressive the first two weeks this season. Well, their offense is really, you can tell it's centered around him. They spread out the field. They put four wide receivers out on the field. You've got to take linebackers out of the middle to cover those guys, and it just gives him lanes. So far, they're really taking advantage. So oh, Deering to kick, Hamilton back deep to receive. This one is returnable. Hamilton takes it at the five. And he's hit hard at the 21 yard line, knocked his helmet off. That was Quadir Fletcher. And now a late flag comes in. And the Franklin sideline clapping, so I think this one might go against FRA. I don't know what this one's for, but everybody's cheering. So they're going to get helmet to helmet on uh, Robert Lown. That'll give the Admirals 15 yards and they'll move up to the 37 yard line. So they'll have a lot, lot better field position to start this drive. Another low snap, but it's handled. Spring again. That's the second time tonight there's been a snap on the ground. Wilson's come up with it, giving it to Spring and he's turned it into a big gain. 17-yard game on the play. So he picks up 17 yards, gets an end to FRA territory. We have a timeout for an injured player, and I think the officials will start this one. And they will stop this one and have the uh, mandatory water break. The player, Yabara, Elliot Yabara is walking off. And you can tell I got the walk with the cramp in the calf there. Yeah. Dude, we called it the pirate. Jay, how would you describe a cramp? Painful at it, my age. Oh, it is gosh. A, it is a dagger. Yes. Uh, no other way to describe it. The uh, bad part is, you know, getting them in the middle of the night. So FRA is going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout, step away. 33-14, FRA leads third quarter.
We are back and ready to go, first and 10. This is Spring getting it off the left side this time. He's gonna be gang tackle there. Amari Sanders was the first FRA player there to wrap him up after little to no gain. Yeah, he tried to go off left tackle there and there's just nothing there. So it's big 67, that's uh, Bradley Schmoke on the stop. That's your favorite player tonight, isn't it? Schmoke, I like it. <laughs> so second and 10 from the 46. And we got whistles and let's see. That what, is another cramp. We got a player going down. For FRA Keelan Neal. And we've got an injury timeout. So again, we'll take a timeout as well. 7.03 to go third quarter. Franklin with the ball inside FRA territory and driving. We'll come back. Here we go, returning here at Franklin High School. Franklin with the ball, clock running. Third quarter, trailing 33-14. They both teams have traded touchdowns this half. Wilson to throw, he's gonna throw deep. Long pass, far side, incomplete, trying to hit Will. No, that's, that's Lucas Young. And he was out there tied up with Jonathan Wilson. Yeah, well defended that time by Wilson. He was with him step for step. And here we go, third and long. Might be deep enough in this game to look at this. It's two down. Yeah, I was just thinking they might need to get to the 40 where it's at least fourth and four. Wilson throws near sideline, caught. That's Wills Jackson on the sideline, does the toe tap. He's close, he might be a yard short, if and any. He's getting eight yards in the play. It's fourth and two. Fourth and two. And putting the ball down at the 38. Got to get to the 36. I'd say Coach Melton goes for this. He got to with 637 to go in the third quarter, trailing 33-14. Yeah, good route there. Just stop route. Good catch, throw and catch. So big play here, fourth and short. And we have a whistle. And Franklin saw something they didn't like. Kerry Collins, offensive coordinator, sees something he didn't like. Franklin will take a timeout. The Franklin High Athletics and the Franklin Athletic Booster Club have again partnered for the second annual golf scramble fundraiser. This year's scramble will take place on Saturday, October 28th at Greystone Golf Club in Dixon. The shotgun start will take place at 8 a.m. So Your golf scramble coming up. Golf scramble coming up this year again. Uh, second annual uh, Franklin High School Athletics and Athletic Booster Club. Uh, this year out at Greystone Golf Club in uh, Dixon. Be on October 28th, be, at, be in the morning. Eight o'clock shotgun start. Uh, gonna try to dodge all the uh, college football games. Get right. done before all those college football games start. We already looked at the schedule, Rocky. UT plays Kentucky that weekend, and we guarantee it'll be the six o'clock game. It's not gonna be the 
2.30 game because Georgia and Florida play that time. So I'm, I'm glad you're thinking of me when you <laughs> when you schedule these things. Fourth and two, big play coming up here for the Admiral's offense. Need to convert this, keep the drive alive. They'll go to Gacka. He'll cut it over to the left side. First down and more. He's across the 30, down to the 25. Another good run for Sean Gacka. Yeah, right off left side, some fancy footwork. Made him some space. Started up the middle, looked like it closed up, and he bounced it to the outside, got the first down. So the drive stays alive at the 25. Big play, adds needed that. And now we have a whistle, another player going down. And Rocky, you called it. You said a lot of these players that are playing both ways, it might come back to affect them. And here we see another injury, another, another cramp. So we'll have another stoppage. We'll take another break and be back. Back at Franklin High School, 5.58, clock running. Franklin driving, trailing 33 to 14, but they've got a good drive going. They're inside the 25-yard line. They'll go back to Gacka. This time he's caught in the backfield and brought down. That's number 30. It came through the line. Quadir Fletcher. And Fletcher came through and got the tackle. So second and 11, loss of one on the play. Spring back in at running back here. Wilson to throw. He's got Jackson, Jackson in the hands, can't come up with it. Bounced around and just dropped it. Brewer Wilson put it on the money. Jackson again wishes he could have that one back. He ran a little hitch and go, got by his man, and couldn't come up with it. Yeah, Jackson's had a pretty big night tonight. He's called almost everything his way. He wishes he had that one back. So third and 11, another big third down here, third and long. Wilson to throw. This time looking for, I believe that's Lucas Young, but there's one, two, three flags down. Now two flags are way over on one side of the field and the other one's over on this side. Oh, I didn't even see that one. Now to me, compared to the last couple of battles for football, that wasn't a flag. So Jonathan Wilson gets flagged for pass interference. And that should give the ads a first down. And it will be first down at the 13. Number 
18, defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. So this time the drive kept alive by a penalty. Spring goes straight out the middle, runs over a man and gets some yardage. Look like Minor Blue that was the first man there to hit him. No relation to Brock, Brock Ballou. So he got two yards, second down from the 11. Ads really need a score here. Keep this one alive. Hamilton cuts it back in the middle. Knocked down hard, but not after a good pickup. He gets down to about the five yard line. Still be a yard or two short of the first down, but a good run there from Kia Hamilton. Yeah, I thought they had him for a loss on that play. He was able to make some, make a guy miss. I think what, six, seven yard gain? Six yards on the play. It's 32. So third down and about two yards, short two. Kia Hamilton's fresh legs still in at running back. They'll throw. Going to the corner, Jackson, this time he pulls it in. Touchdown, Admirals. Wills Jackson makes up for the earlier ball, catches this one. Just threw it up. The taller receiver went up and got it for the score. So with 3.20 left, the ads are on the board again here in the second half. 3.20 to go in the third quarter. Elijah Bagwell on to try the extra point. Bagwell's kick is up and good. So 3.20 to go, new score, FRA 33, Franklin 21. We got a game, folks, we'll be back. Back at Franklin High School, third quarter, 33 to 21. Franklin on the board again. Punching J back. Jay Johnson and Rocky Jackson, Gary Thompson, 
up here in the booth tonight for the season, or correction, the home opener for the Admirals this year. And country night. Western night, Western yes, close night. enough. Nope. <laughs> So 23, Wayne Wells to boot it for the Admirals. Ty Clark is back deep with Michael Hassel. Two dangerous return men, and we have a flag, and I think Franklin was offsides. Both kick teams for Franklin that had some trouble tonight, Jay. So that'll back him up five yards. Now we'll see him kick off from the 35. So play clock running down to 10. I don't think I've ever said that on a kickoff. On a kickoff. Well, when you get backed up, he went over to ask the coach, you know, kind of, what do I do? And it's a squib kick this time, and it comes to council. And he's bowling his way. He's still bowling his way across the 45 out to near midfield, and they finally get him down. Around the 49-yard line, and he's slow to get up. So that looks like council that's down with a cramp. And both teams come to the sideline now to grab a little bit of water. And I got to throw this out there. Just we got we got a little dead time, so I'm going to throw it out there. If we look off to the, I guess that would be the northeast, a little lightning flashing. <laughs> and, and, and based on what it is right now, heat lightning. <laughs> Almost <laughs> certainly. Unless you're seeing a drone. Yes. <laughs> Council limping off. He's had a night, too. He has several really good skill players out there. Could come back later. That's their kicker going off with cramps. Yep. Council's had a kick and duty so far. So good field position here for FRA to start this drive. Franklin's defense is going to have to get a stop. They've only forced two punts tonight. Kennard's going to keep it, and he's snowed under there by one, two, three, four, five. Franklin players. Yeah, they swung Ty Clark out left as receiver, but just had nowhere to go with it. Good defense. So Kennard loses a yard on the play. And it's second and 11, 2.44 to go, clock running, third quarter. FRA content to let that play clock run down. He'll fake it this time. Kennard again, nowhere to go. And he's met in the backfield by Walker Wells. Two big stops, two big losses here. Brings up third and long. It's a loss of three yards on the play. 
So big third down here, third and 14. Those last two plays are the first time I can remember Franklin's front getting any kind of depth on FRA. They're in the backfield. Crowd making some noise here, third down. Know it's a big play, need a stop here. Get the offense back on the field. Kennard lets the play clock run down. Play clock at six. Now they'll snap it. Kennard rolls left, got time, looking, looking, throws, incomplete. And the Franklin defense holds. Yeah, that's a big stop there. Kennard all night's had trouble when he rolls out to his left. That's a hard throw for a quarterback to make. That's a righty. He's got to turn the hips and everything. It's a good defense there to come up short. So Franklin's defense gets off the field. FRA started that drive with great field position and made, made no headway, actually lost four or five yards. So Council, who just came off with a cramp, is going to have to catch and punt the football. It's going to and we have a flag. Somebody moved early. So that'll back them up five more yards. And FRA going the wrong way on this drive. Remember, Council's the player that left the game earlier just a few minutes ago with a cramp. They come after him. He kicks this one a mile high, but not very well deep. short, clear. And it's going to roll back towards Franklin. And that punt is going to be touched down at the 39. That punt may have gone one yard officially. And now you got a late flag coming in. That punt was a mile high. It landed around the 47 yard line, bounced backwards across midfield and down to the 39. So, and also an add five yards to that as the FRA players didn't down the ball, they kicked it. So an illegal touching penalty gets them five more yards. So ads take over on the 34. Great chance to cut this to a one score game. Yes, yeah, it's a big opportunity here. Back with spring. Spring off the right side. He gets stood up after a yard, maybe two. Dad's in on the stop. So they give him a yard up to the 33. Thirty seconds to go here in the third quarter. Wilson will throw this time, and he'll be sacked. Wilson sacked him, okay, by Council. Bobby Council, he's been everywhere tonight. He's having himself a game. And that will be the final play of the third quarter. So we played three quarters here at Franklin High School. And your score is Franklin Road Academy 33, Franklin 21. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this.
So we're ready to get underway here, fourth quarter. Franklin trailing 33-21. And here's a flag. Let's see who moved. So Franklin gets five of it back after the sack. It'll move it up to the 40. Third and 11. Third and 16. Oh, goodness. Wilson going deep. And Jackson couldn't get under that one. So it's fourth down from the 40. It's fourth and long. It's fourth down. And it's decision time, and decision's been made. They're going to punt. Thompson King to punt, low snap. King comes up with it. He still got it away. And it's gonna bounce and be downed at about the two yard line. That was a fantastic play. Franklin has got more breaks tonight on low snaps. That ball bounced twice before it reached Thompson. He picked it up, took three steps, rugby style. I was about to say, it looked like the rugby the two. style kickers. Just like they drew it up. So ball at the two yard line. And they'll give it to Clark straight up the middle. And he wasn't touched and he is at midfield. Foot race. Are they gonna catch him? He is caught and brought down by Luke Thompson. But only after he rumbles for 90, do the math, 96 yards. They run a bit of a 92 like yards. A, a stunt up front with defensive tackles and they just got caught. You know, and that's a pattern we've seen, you know, earlier in the game, FRA's backed up at the five yard line in the first play, they ran up, busted a big run up the middle. Yeah, and it's nothing fancy. They're just running right off guard and for a long way. Franklin hadn't had an answer for that all night. Now given, again, Ty Clark is a big running back. That's a lot to bring down, but he went 90 yards before he was touched on that play. Well, I'd say with that run, he's probably approaching 200 yards rushing tonight. So a big response there from FRA gets the ball down to the six where it'll be first and goal with 11.25 to go in the fourth quarter. So clock running, first and goal, FRA from the six. After that run, they give Clark a break. It's Michael Hassel in it running back. Hassel had a good run in the first quarter, had a call back. He's gonna spin down to about the five, maybe the four. Well done on the shot.
Gain of two yards on the play. Second and goal from the fourth. So FRA running some clock now. Leading it by 12. Hassel bounces it outside. He's going to make it to the end zone this time. Yeah, they plugged up the inside that time. He's just able to bounce out. So Hassel finally gets his touchdown. And it's 39 to 21. Deering on to try the extra point again. His kick is good. So with 10 10 to go in the fourth, Franklin now trails by 19 40 to 21. Yeah, after that, let's call it backwards punt not being able to do anything. It just took the air out of this crowd here. Yeah, it would have made the game interesting right there. If they had punched that in, you'd have had a 33 to 28 game. Yeah, two touchdown game in fourth quarter, not capitalizing on that mistake really hurt. This is even before the long, the long run by Clark. So looking ahead, it gets no easier for Franklin coming up. You look at their schedule. Next week they travel to Page, who coming off a state finals appearance last year. And then they'll follow that up. They'll be back at home the next week against Independence. They'll follow that up with road games to Nolansville, a state quarterfinalist, or excuse me, a state semifinalist last year before meeting Summit, traveling to Summit for their back home to host Brentwood. So, so not, a, uh, not a really good road coming up for the ads. Uh, we just checked the score. Independence and Page right now are tied at 17. Um, so a uh, really good game going on there down in uh, Thompson Station at Independence. Yeah, it does not get easier from here. And you know they're going to be watching this film and they're going to run right at Frank. So here again, one of these, you know, longer possession changes, we would call it, while teams get a little extra water, a little extra time to hydrate tonight. Students still here. They having a party. <laughs> They're going to end up cramping too. <laughs> this rate. We may be calling Alexis over to the uh, student section here shortly to for some what do what they used to have. We used to have salt tablets and yeah. bananas. 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 So Deering to kick off again. Kia Hamilton back on the goal line once again. Again, 10-10 to go, fourth quarter. And this time they'll pooch it. And it's going to drop and be fielded there. And going nowhere after the catch, that's number 21, Aaron Perry. And he's knocked out of bounds over across the way on the far sideline. And the ads will take over at the 27, it looks like. So Franklin's going to have to score quick here. Got to keep fighting.
And now we have a whistle. Had to fix the play clock, I think. Yep. Hamilton off the right side. He's trying to get the corner. And he won't be able to do it. He got back to the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think that was Minor Blue who came up middle just to slow that play down so he couldn't get the edge. Need a big play here. Out route intended for Lucas Young is incomplete. So third and long here. Still early. You can tell that a lot of the time and routes between the quarterback and receivers just not there yet to be early in the season still. Wilson's going to be brought down and sacked this time. And that's going to be number 30. Fletcher. Fletcher's going to get in the backfield and get his second sack of the night. Yeah, he came right up the middle and a gap untouched. So I was kind of starting to think, is it four down territory yet where you go for it? But after the sack, you definitely got a kick. Thompson King comes on. Yeah. I think only Lane Kiffin would go for this. <laughs> Mike Leach. Maybe. It's a high wobbly kick angling towards the sideline. It's going to bounce back towards the middle of the field. And it's going to be down just inside the 44 yard line. I finally saw the heat lightning you were referring to. So I wasn't imagining things over there. Nope. The funny part is I looked at halftime. I saw nothing on the radar. I mean, it was clear. Now see a little lightning out there to the northeast. So great field position for FRA here. And pretty much got to have a stop here. Quarterback keeps it this time. He's met there. Thompson King got to Logan Kennard first. Yeah, they faked the dive that time to Clark. Tried to run around the left and Thompson sniffed it out. So he gets a couple. And FRA rushes to the line and stands there. This is going to be a long one, too. We'll be 15 seconds. And play clock down to 10. Running the clock. Now just keep it on the ground with Clark. Clark makes one man miss. He's into the secondary and Thompson King will bring him down at the 30 yard line. And we got two players down on that play. Clark's one of them. Yeah, Clark kind of went down awkward on that left knee on that play. He's up, but he's leaving the field. Oh. 
We're going to get our first down. So clock running again, 7.15 to go. And they'll just hand it off straight up the middle. Hassel with the carry. And he's brought down there. Evan Robison was there for Franklin. So he gets six. It'll be second and, or it looks like closer to seven, be second and about three. Second for FRA still getting all the plays from the sidelines. Straight up the middle with Hassel. He's got room, he's in the secondary, and he's gonna be dragged down about the 10 yard line. It's quite the one-two punch they have with, with Clark and Hassel. Yeah, one's a bruiser, Hassel's a little bit more mobile. He's tough to bring down. Santino Bernard made the tackle, but it's first and goal right at the 10 yard line. And FRA can pretty much ice it if they punch one in here. They'll just stick with Hassel straight up the middle. He's down to about the seven, maybe the six. From the Clock running, approaching the five minute mark right now. Just keep it on the ground with Hassel straight up the middle. He's stacked up inside the five. He comes out limping now. Queen it on the stop for that move. Bobby Council coming off injured. It's third and goal. So third and goal from the four. This time they'll throw it into the end zone. Brown, touchdown. Yeah, Brown just ran a stop route. Went right down in the end zone and boxed out just like he was playing basketball all alone. So Deering on to try the extra point to make it. And his kick is up and good. So it's 47 21. Four thirteen still left on the clock. Rocky, you seen another score from Independence Page over there? I'm trying to load. <laughs> Franklin's next two opponents squaring off tonight down in uh, Thompson Station at Independence. I still show 17-17, fourth quarter. Oh, 
under a minute left in the fourth. Wow, here's a shocking score. A couple of, or at least a future opponent of Franklin, Centennial, 42 to nothing over Summit. Wow, that is, a, I was not expecting that. Of course, it's early, you never know. Yeah, that 17-17 score. Apparently Page had a 17-3 lead and India scored twice in the fourth quarter to tie it. So 4-13 still to go. Franklin trailing 47-21 to Franklin Road Academy. on one of the hottest nights I can remember here at Franklin High School. Yeah, we've seen the effects on the field too. Several players going down. Cramps. Looks like we'll get some relief next week. We're talking about uh, by the end of the week, look like about 80 degrees. So we'll take that anytime. Bring out the pumpkin spice. <laughs> Hamilton on the return from the five. He's got a little bit of room this time. Here comes two flags in. As they push the pile forward, he's out across the 30, and then there's a there's a shove late. So not, two two flags over there. Yeah, I'm not sure what the flags for. I mean, you think it's holding, but. Holding. Number nine, Virginia. Ten-yard penalty, foul. What's that? So it's Jack Flynn that's going to get called for holding on the return. So that'll back Franklin up on their. Maybe their best kickoff return of the night. It's going to put them back around the 12 yard line. So 88 yards to go here. 402 to go and they've got two timeouts. I think that's Tanner Clark in Tan running back. Tanner Clark the transfer in at quarterback. So Franklin going the wrong way on this drive. Tanner Clark, the transfer in at quarterback. When I see number 20 playing quarterback, I always think of uh, Bernie Kosar. <laughs> So he'll hand it off on his first play, straight up the middle. Spring still in, running the ball. I gotta give the student section some credit. They having a lot of fun in a 47 to 21 football game. And they, they always have. They've John been a... Denver is rocking. <laughs> Hand off again, straight up the middle, nothing doing again. This time it's Aiden Domingo on the carry. So Coach Melton getting some subs in here in this last drive. It's third down. So 
So third and 14 from the 12, Clark to throw. He's going to fire it across on the far sideline, incomplete, trying to hit Parker Barthel over there. Let the punt it again. <clears throat> so Thompson King on the punt here, fourth down and 14 from the 12. And a low snap again. And Thompson gets this one away. It's going to be caught at the 42 and tripped up. Nice open field tackle there by Sean Gacka. Brings up first down again for FRA. So FRA goes to their bench as coming in at quarterback number nine, Roman Mallerwine. He's a big kid. <laughs> There's a, yes, he's been playing linebacker most of the night. And he'll hand it off on the first play as a flag flies on the near sideline. Parker Edwards got the carry. Parker Edwards on the carry. Illegal, four, illegal formation, five in the backfield, five yard penalty, replay first down. So that one's coming back for an illegal formation. Mallerwine, Mallerwine got some work last week as well. Shows six attempts for 36 yards. You know, one of the things I looked at earlier today is uh, Kennard last week uh, at quarterback had a QB rating of 128.1. Yeah, that's, that's quite <laughs> That's well. pretty good. He'd be good on a fantasy team doing that. Yeah. Yeah, when you got a quarterback rating of 128.1 and a running back with seven carries and 131 yards, I would imagine you've won the football game. Yes, pretty easily. Yep. As this is Edwards getting the carry. Getting the tackle for Franklin, number 50, Bennett Spillman came up to make the stop. As we're down to a minute and 37 seconds. And FRA is content to just run this one down. Maybe two, two to three more plays here. They'll just keep it on the ground with Edwards. He's going to go straight up the middle, drag a tackler or two forward. Evan Robinson made the tackle. And we're inside of a minute with FRA in control, 47-21. Yeah, FRA's rushing the tack just too much tonight for the Admirals. So this play here ought to do it as the clock's inside of 40 seconds now. So this should be the final play of the game. So they'll keep it on the ground. Edwards off the left side, and he's going to be brought down by Robinson again. And that should be the final play of the game. As FRA's players start to head to the sideline, it will be. Your final score tonight is going to be FRA 47, Franklin 21. Again, next week, Franklin travels to Page. We just got where Page and Independence are in overtime right now. So Franklin travels to Page next week before returning home on September the 8th.
to face Independence. So the Admirals put up 21 tonight, had some impressive moments, but just not enough. Rocky, your final thoughts? Yeah, it's tough when you can't stop the run against anybody, but, uh, you know, had a lot of bright spots tonight. I just think, again, you had too many times when you made mistakes and you couldn't capitalize. The, the pass interference come back to get them. We had two big, big drops that could have changed the game. But in the end, the when you can't stop the run against a team like this, you're gonna have a long night. Yeah, talk about the, uh, you, you know, you had it down to 33-21 and had a short field. That was a big possession that went the other way. Uh, give FRA credit. They made a big sack on that play, backed them up, and uh, couldn't get anything going. And uh, Franklin wasn't able to capitalize. That kind of did them in for the rest of the night. So once again tonight, your final score here at Franklin High School, FRA 47, Franklin 21. Again, we'll be back in two weeks, two weeks, when Independence visits Franklin High. So thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Johnson for Rocky Jackson, Miss Carrie Thompson, and the Franklin High School media class.